Hey traders, this is T Bradley 90 from the My Investing Club chat. I'm one of the top mentors and moderators in chat. As a special gift to our viewers on YouTube, we have created a free two hour course to help teach you how to start a consistently profitable trading business and identify high paying setups in just 30 days. There will be limited seating every week, so register for the course and reserve your spot now using the link in the description. As a special bonus for everyone that watches the entire video, we will give you the link to a free 10 hour additional mini course that has never been released to the public. Register now before all slots completely fill up. So today I'm gonna to be, I was gonna talk about the first resistance short today. I had a good one planned for today because we had a really good example on Yuma um, this week. But um, then like today came along and like, I, 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 you know, I was gonna, I asked everyone if I wanted to change it to this topic and everyone said, sure, right? Uh, Aloha, buddy. Island time, it's 105. So today we're gonna be talking about the stuff. And so it might be a little bit of review for some uh, older traders, but I, there's still gonna be some, uh, some, some good stuff in here. And I'm gonna kind of go in detail about what I like to look for in particular. All right, so we're gonna be talking about every webinar for the, for the, for the off chances of their first one. I talk about the key traders of the week. I talk about market sentiment, what's been going on in the market, large caps, small caps, just kind of the overall feel. Mostly it's a small cap sentiment I'm more, I'm, I care about because that's most of my trades and I think most of the trades of the people in this room. Uh, then I try to talk about like a lot of the kind of themes of the week where like some sometimes just things pop up in chat or in after hours and things get talked about like most commonly you know ask questions in the weekend mentoring like stuff I get calls about. I like to bring them up in the tra in trader topic segment. Just, just, it's just an eclectic view of a um, of wide variety of trading topics that we all kind of deal with. And my takes on them. Uh, then this week, because uh, we're talking about the stuff, I'm gonna that's that's a strategy based. So, just some key traders that I took oh, this week. Uh, Doc, you kind of gapped up on uh, like 25 percent or something, uh, and it was like. Uh, a large cap, that's actually a pretty big move for a large cap on a, on a stuff. Uh, by the way, can you guys hear the AC in the background? I know I ask you every week, but it seems louder today. Is it, is it, is it clear or is there a background noise that you guys hear? It's good? Oh, this mic is good still. Okay. Yeah, so Docky was a stock that popped up 25%, I think on good earnings. And 25% is a lot for a big cap. So anytime big caps kind of gap up that much, unless it's super like, super super significant news I, I tend to be more on the kind of retracement like maybe up a little too much over excitement on the news uh mentality and so uh basically this turned out to be a trend trade so um uh i think i should talk about this part first I, i'm going to be going over this in greater depth in another webinar based um one that's kind of more dedicated to large caps alone but uh, a little preview of that is when I trade large caps, there's a, there's a specific pattern or like approach that I really like to use on large caps. And basically, unless I'm trying to like trade a parabolic short or a washout, something like that at the very open, my typical strategy for trading large caps is I let the open flurry kind of happen, right? Where, where it's just mass hysteria at the open. This is where I feel like large caps kind of make their, they normally make their biggest moves, right? Like all stocks, the most volatility is right at the open. But um, I try to let that, I let that opening flurry happen. And it's my kind of hypothesis that large caps trend a lot better than small caps do. So the next one was LCI. And I actually, I have a video coming out on LCI that's going to go into this trade in, a lot, in more detail, but it's not out yet. So, um, uh, the, I, I showed this chart because this chart's the most important part of the trade. This chart, um, right? This I, I took this screenshot today. Um, the trade started when we were right here on this big day, and the, my trade happened on the red day. So you can see, uh, you should be able to tell right away what I was going for if you kind of hide this part of the trade, right? The the red day and the and the two greens in this last red. What I was looking for, right? This is very clearly a first red day setup. Right, so this is a first red day short, and the only other one I think I have a video for on this is pins. So I'm glad I finally 
have another one. This one did. This one definitely didn't work out perfectly though, and so let's get into it. So this was the first red day short, and what happened immediately out of the gate is that this stock, um, this stock, I just had to check to make sure I was recording, is that this stock um, fell down immediately, right? So if, if you guys have, um, anyone who is in Philly knows this because I answered this question in Philly, but um, the first red day short for me has two different scenarios. There's scenario A where it gaps up, and then there's like scenario B where it gaps down, right? So the first red day is typically on stock. It's typically gapping up every single day and it's never been red, right? This stock, however, actually did go red a couple different times. So I was a little more conservative with this one, just knowing that this stock had gone red a couple different times. Like you can see the bottom whips on these. I was more careful on this day, thinking that this could just be a wick and it could, it could come back. So knowing that I was more careful with LCI just because LCI has also been just been a pain in the ass for all short sellers in general. So I had that like, I, I, you know, I had my finger on the cover button ready for the trade not to work coming into this trade. So it, it gaps down immediately. And so, so scenar like I said, the scenario B is when it gaps down, right? Scenario A is when I'm looking for the stock. Now it's gapping up and I don't want to be a part of it until it makes a lower low. Ideally, uh, Yuma was another good one. And this is the trade I wanted to do the first resistance short on based on the fact that this was the first resistance short that in a way, like there's two kind of first resistances, right? There was two, res two times you could have made this trade and I'll go over this in another, in, in the next one, but there was basically two times one didn't work, but one did, right? I'll, I'll go over that in, in, in another, maybe next week when I do first resistance, I'll use this as an example, even if there's a better one. Uh, so anyway, so this was just the first bounce long, right? Um, and I, I picked a really zoomed out picture because the, the zoomed in picture is in chat and I guess I don't want to just show the zoomed in picture. Maybe you'll think I traded it later and didn't show it. I don't know. There are trolls out there. But anyway, this was all I did today. Like, I think this shows that all you need is one good trade on the day to, to make your day, right? All you need is one trade and you don't have to involve yourself in any part of the trade at all. You only have to get in when you see your edge, right? And there was clear edge over here on the breakdown, but this is a great example of an epic overextended trend break setup, but I didn't have the borrow. Um, Joe did and he nailed it and good for Joe, right? Um, but anyway, so my trade on this was the first bounce long. And so this, um, as I talked about before, like I'm not actually the best first bouncer. Harry is a much better first bouncer than I am. Like I consider the first bounce to be um, a continuation long. The first bounce is an example of a continuation long. I'm not very good at, like, I'm a longer, but continuation longs are not my specialty, right? Um, and the first bounce is essentially a continuation, right? The first criteria for the first bounce is a big move up, a straight move up. And what you're looking for is to bounce it. You think, you know, because the assumption is that there will not be, Cody did a good example of capturing this note, uh, like big, strong moves to the upside are very rarely um, matched in an equal parallel move to the downside, like a, an equal, like, you know, verbatim move, like all the way back down to 325. That typically doesn't happen. There's typically a bounce somewhere, which is the idea of the first bounce. Oh, and so the market said, uh, I'm, I, I was really surprised this week, actually, when I do this, anyone who's been here any, any time at all, like any people who are here week to week, this is always red. This is always red, like mostly red and a couple greens, like keeping the momentum up. We had a lot of good, like strong stocks that just didn't give it up this week. Tough, tough week to be a short seller if you weren't picking, right? Like, I mean, Roku just, steam, like Roku had like one or two red days and then steamrolled everybody in the last couple sessions. LCI is just holding up strong. ARDX is just grinding, right? A ACAD had a strong gap and held it. MNK, ENDP, just slow grinders up. Fran went absolutely berserk. TTOO just continued its charge, right? Fran and TT, TTOO definitely leading the, the small cap momentum, keeping like the, keeping us in that buyer's market, basically. And I'm really grateful because, not just because I like the long, but I think that the best opportunities come for shorts too in a bull market. You just have to be picky with it. 
So um, the market's super optimistic about trade neg negotiations being open and trade negotiations and trade tariffs being delays, highs at all time highs. That's always good for, for um, I think the, the market as a whole. Um, you know, Yuma had its massive tank, right? Yuma had this massive tank. Um, I didn't, I, I think that kind of, you know, like that, that tug of war the other way, NSPR, SINT stuff today, tops just, you know, I, I don't know, what did it offer? It's tops probably, I forget, some kind of bad news, but like that's tops, always bad news. Uh, blacks are kind of neutral. That's why I'm put them as black. And basically my market participant column over here, I, it's not necessarily if the stock stays green, it's green. If the stock stays red, it's red. Because small caps, with small caps, I kind of, I give, I judge sentiment based on what I think the market expects stocks to do. So Everybody. I still think we're here. We were here last week, and I hope we stay here next week. We haven't entered this tanker's market here, I don't think. I don't think, you know, most of the stocks are still green, still strong, and I hope we stay there. For those of this is their first webinar, this is the pattern that small caps I feel tend to follow. We enter a buyer's market where everyone buys everything and then everyone eventually just gets stuffed on and then ever, nobody buys anything anymore and this everything dies and then everyone's sick of everything dying and nobody buys anything anymore and then we enter a dead market. If no one buying anything, if PRs are coming out and stocks aren't popping up, we're in a dead market and the decrepit market is when we're in a dead market and it's summer. So, um, so a trader topic for the week, and I kind of touched on, I kind of made another webinar about this in the past, but uh, knowing your limits is a big part of trading, right? And the most important limit, I think, the most pertinent um, in every trader's everyday uh, trading life is their patience level. So I talked a little bit about this before, but if this is your first webinar, um, hoping it's helpful. Um, at the end of the day, your P&L is the only thing that matters, right? And as much as we say, don't look at the P&L, right? Like you're still going to look. And at the end of the day, you're still going to, and as much as I will preach, don't try to like judge yourself based on one day, right? If you have a bad day in the market, you're going to be feeling lousy. And you know, it, part of the trading process is like evolving past this, right? You kind of have to train yourself to be like a little bit uncaring, you know, and try to come into everyday fresh, right? Um, another limit is, uh, <laughs> I can't believe I put this on here. I was debating that so heavily putting that on there. Um, knowing your, you know, knowing your, knowing your size limit is another, uh, limit that's very important to, um, trading, right? So, and, and this is so obvious, like, I'm going to go over this really fast, but knowing your size limit, like why does trading too big lead to inconsistent results? I just wanted to reiterate, it's because you're not in control, right? And basically you're making forced decisions, right? So kind of piggybacking on what I talked about last week and two times has really, uh, Alex has really um, kind of embraced it and it's working for him. So I'm really stoked on that. Um, is that like trading below your means a little bit is the easiest way to be in control, right? That's the easiest way to be in control, being aware of your limits. Your limits are probably stronger, by the way, when you're in control. That's what it is for me. Um, and it's the easiest way to make better trades, right? And the, the key secret with trading below your means, like, is that you will scale, people who are trading up here at the brink of their limit are trying to scale up like this. If you're down here trading below your means, you're going to scale up in the, at the same speed, but you're just starting, like, you're just, you're just giving yourself a, you're giving them a head start, but you're going to catch up right? You're going to catch up. Like you're, you're just starting from further back. You know, you're going to still scale up that if your means is 500 shares and you're trading 200 shares, eventually like you're going to go from 500 to 600, 700 to 800. Well, you're going to go from 200 to 300 to 400 to 500. Eventually you're going to get there and now you're going to be trading 500 shares. And, but the thing is you just didn't start there. And if you started 500 shares and you're like this, you know, trying to scale up, it's gonna be a lot smoother. You're gonna go straight up to 500 and you're gonna be at 500, but you're not gonna go through that chop in your, in your P&L because you're in control of your trades, right? So the catch up period, trading below your means, you're going to catch up to your previous, you know, at the brink mean size, but now that's going to be your comfortable size. So 
So if you always trade comfortably and scale up slowly, eventually you're going to get to where you were trying to trade when it was at the brink of your limit, but now it's going to be comfortable, right? So the catch up period is temporary, but why does nobody do this? The reason why nobody does this is literally because they're impatient and greedy. For that. This is the, um, anyway, so the stuff move, right? Um, uh, okay, so first, I brain part there. I was trying to read the chat. Like Val said, start with 100 shares. Yeah, you'll eventually get to 500 shares. You'll get there. But if you start at 500 shares and try to make yourself to 1,000, that's a rocky road, right? That is a rocky road. But like, I mean, if you just start at 100, you're gonna get to 500 in no time. And then you, eventually you'll get to 1,002. And what, what's the problem with just being below your means if you're still climbing? Yeah, so this was my uh, suit trade today. And this is a stuff, basically. So first of all, for new people in the, in the room, what is a stuff, right? For, for new traders who are maybe vague on the concept, what is a stuff? A stuff is an accelerated move to the upside on increased volume met with a massive rejection and then normally followed by a harsh slam down of the stock proving that there was a wall of seller, right? Sometimes it's just one dude. A lot of times it's just one dude or like one, you know, maybe it's HC Wainwright putting out a block up there, right? Like, or maybe it's a whole bunch of people all at once, right? Um, like it, it just proves that there was, way too much supply right there basically and so oftentimes these are orchestrated meaning like somebody pushed it up there somebody bought it up somebody held it up while they sold their longs and then they slammed short and then they crashed it right they pulled the bids sold their longs and now it's no bids right looks like that's what happened today right but the moves can be organic right the moves can just be stocks are sometimes curious right sometimes they want to test up that resistance level buyers do want to go and you know buy for the breakout and and so and you know like they want to see if it's gonna break on the breakout and if there's enough interest in that happening sometimes it's organic and true buyers just want to test but then natural selling pressure comes and that can also be a stuff right where everyone's riding on maybe this is the breakout it pops up over the level and then um, it stops down because there's too much supply it can be organic but a lot of times a small cap moves it's totally orchestrated I, I mean. I'm, all right, Rune is the only thing on your watch list. Oh, Rune, the, that's the other one. It's the only thing on your watch list. Good news is that you have, good news that you have all three trades left. Yeah, let's pull up Rune. Yeah, Rune is looking pretty. Uh, oh, that was a nice sell off end of the day. So like a pop up to here would be nice. Um, what I would want it to do is kind of like kind of parabolic up there though, because then I would feel that would, like this would be a very nice first resistance short if it parabolics up here tomorrow. That would be cool. Um, that would be a really, really classic setup, but like it'll probably be do some some something not so nice and like tank and then recover and then consolidate and make you second guess all the time. Right, yes, HMP. Uh, is there is there time for a day trader to give up? No. No. Um, do you have a gaming chair? Or no, no. I just have a simple office chair. Um. It just that, like my, it, it, like the gaming chair does like I, I want the office chair because then I can slide under my de like I have my desk has like a cubby hole for my feet. The gaming chairs often they're too tall, so I, I can't. Uh, my setup as now I like my charts like this. Not if you love it, tar Tarzan or Tsar. Um, as someone who has studied a lot, do you have any thoughts on overstudying? Yeah, it, you can do it. You can definitely overstudy. And you just do, you just do, you just go so hard. And so, and like, the thing is, is you think that you're doing a really good thing and you are, but you go overboard. Like you, most people try to study because what they're trying to do is they're trying to come to the game with all the experience and not lose money. That's why they try to overstep. They're trying to come to the game um, like an experienced trader and they're getting all their experience from studying. And that's just not the way it works. I know, I try, right? But you can also like, you can try to, oh, like you, you can be too much of a scientist about it. And if you're too much of a scientist about like stocks, they're good. It's, it's not a science, it's an art. And if by overstudying, you're trying to like, most of the time people are trying to like work into a science and like, 
And like, there, there's no one size fits all answer. And that's kind of what they're looking for. And you're just going to get struck by analysis paralysis. Like it's going to come into the market time, time to make a decision. And you're going to be like, well, but it hasn't crossed these, it hasn't crossed these T's and dotted these I's and filled out these check marks. And you're just going to be like super analyzing the situation. The trade is going to go up and go down without you. And like, where were you? Right. Um, what will the name of this webinar be? Um, I don't know. Like probably the stuff. <laughs> the, I don't know, the stuff stuff. Yeah, the stuff that like, yeah. You can I like I think you can definitely you can't overstudy in the long run, but you can overstudy in a in a period of time. You can overstudy for your expectations. Yeah, there's I mean there's never too much to learn. Hey traders, this is Tosh. I go by T Bradley90 in the My Investing Club chat. Just wanted to reach out and say if you have any questions about MIC, joining MIC, maybe you're a member already, you have three ways to contact myself personally and through MIC. You can hit our social media, you can hit me through PMs in chat, or you can contact us through my email at Tosh at myinvestingclub.com. That's T O S H at myinvestingclub.com. I will get back to you in a timely manner, and I'm saying this because I'm here to help, and I don't want anybody to be afraid to reach out and ask any question that they have. We are here for you guys. All right, see you guys.